Welcome. Today we will be looking at blend spaces. We will be creating two different blend spaces and showing how they can be used in an animation blueprint. So let's get started. This is what we will be creating today. We'll have a character that is able to move in different directions, running around with a rifle animation. And once you press shift, he will go into an aiming mode, which will allow him to aim down sights, and he'll have a different way of animating when it comes to blend spaces, both with the ability to strafe ba backwards and forwards, and also keep in line with whichever way the camera is moving, and then you can just release and go back to running around in the normal mode again. First off, we need to get some animations, so we'll go to the Unreal Engine store and we will pick up some. So if you go to the marketplace and you search for animation starter, you'll get this result of an animation starter pack provided by Epic Games, free to use. So you'll just uh, download this, add to cart, whichever way you want, and then we will add this to our project. There, the animations are now imported into the project. If you want to follow along today, we will be using Unreal Engine version 4.26. We are using the third person template for today. We're going to start off with copying a few files. So we'll make a folder. For me, I'll make this folder. You can store your uh, files wherever you want. And we want to copy some files that are under third person blueprint on the blueprints. So we want to copy the third person character and the third person game mode both. The reason why we're doing this is because I want to show you how to have them compartmentalized based on a existing blueprint, showing you just how easy it is to swap out an animation blueprint and how we will edit that animation blueprint to have our blend spaces that we will be creating today. So just to differentiate this blueprint from the other one, we will rename this one, uh, hotkey F2. We'll put a suffix underscore starter just to reference back to the animation starter pack. We'll do the same for the game mode. There we go. Next, we want to do something similar inside the starter pack because this pack comes with its own skeleton that uh, the animations are made for. We'll be renaming the skeleton it comes with to starter as well, just to make sure that we can easily keep track of it uh, from the normal one. Okay, so now we are ready to go ahead and create our blend spaces. So we'll go under animation. Then you have two blend spaces that appear here for us. Blend space 1D means that it is a one dimensional uh, blend space, meaning it will have one axis that it will go along. So you will have, let's say, velocity as your stat. So you will be measuring against velocity to blend between different animations to determine which animations should be blended with and how much. It will become more clear when we start actually making it. Uh, blend space without anything else here is basically a blend space with two dimensions for it. So you will have two axes of animations that you can plot in and then uh, mapping will be made, blending between different ones depending on where you exist on this two-dimensional plane. We will start off by making the blend space 1D for now. And we want to make this blend space for a specific skeleton and we renamed our ones to starter. That's because blend spaces belong to skeletons. They can't be used frivolously, so they need to know where they belong. So our starter skeleton is the one that this belongs to, and we will use the naming convention BS for blend space to prefix it, underscore, uh, let's call it jogging. There we go. 
Let us create our blueprint for animation now. So we'll go under animation again. We'll choose animation blueprint. We'll choose the anime instance, the normal one, as our parent. And we will choose the skeleton that we made. Starter. We will name this BP for blueprint underscore animation starter and save that. So let's go define our one dimensional blend space now. We'll open it up. We'll dock it up here for convenience sake. So this uh, area represents our blend space. Zero being the least amount of value for our axis and 100 for most. Uh, the green dot in the middle represents where we are currently evaluating our blend space. So by holding down shift and moving your mouse, you can put it at a designated area and then you can see how it is blending for that specific value. For us, right now, we don't have any animations put into the blend space. So it doesn't know how to react. So we will find some animations to use here. And let's find one that's called Jog Forward Rifle. We'll drag that into the blend space. We'll drag it at the 100 slot. Let it be there. So now we start to get an animation for what it will look like. In addition to this, we want to have a state for when it is at zero. So we will be using an idle today. So we'll get idle rifle hip. Put that at zero. Then we'll move the marker over here and we'll see what it looks like. So this is the idle state it will have. And the further this value goes along its axis, the more it will blend towards the jogging position in the end over here. Okay, that's all good and fine. So what is this axis? Well, one of the things is up here in axis settings, we can actually put the properties for how it will behave. Uh, one thing that's good to do is to name it something useful and descriptive for the purpose. So forward, if I can spell, forward speed is a descriptive uh, denotion, annotation for this right now, I think. Uh, the values that it wants to use here, 0 and 100, will not work for us currently, and I'll describe that a little bit later. But let's put the maximum at 600 for now. And then we'll save this and go back to the map. The reason we don't want to use 100 as our maximum value for the axis, we can look up our third person character. And we will be using speed today as our value. If you go to our character movement, you can see that we have uh, some variables here set for different things. But among them that is interesting is max walk speed. So we will be using our walk speed as our estimation of where we want to be on the axis. For a keyboard user this doesn't mean a whole lot because either you have pressed the key down which means it's at full speed meaning 600 or if you don't have a key press it's zero meaning you're standing still so it will just go between the two extremes but if you had for example an analog gamepad connected then you could be giving your character partial velocity and for a gamepad then this blend space would transition and show better than it would for a keyboard user. But this is the reason why we are using 600 as our max for the axis. Okay, time to put the blend space into the animation blueprint. So we'll double click the animation blueprint. And we get presented with this. We want to start off with adding a state machine. We'll rename this one default. So this is the state machine that our character will be animating from. We'll drag it to the output pose. That will do for now. Then we will go to our event graph. So this is where the animation gets updated every tick. 
uh, to determine what the animation should currently be looking at. So what we want to start off with doing are a few things. Number one is we want to get the forward vector. We can get that from the pawn owner here. Having that, we want to make a variable that will actually be our forward speed. So we'll make a forward speed variable. We'll change that to float. Now we want to get the velocity of the character. So this represents the velocity a character is moving at, and this represents our direction that our character is looking at. The reason why we want to have both of these is because we want to make a dot product. A dot product is a way to determine how much you are aligned with a certain direction in 3D space. The reason why we're using this is because of the blend space that we will be making a little bit later. We wouldn't need this necessarily for now. We could just use the velocity here and be done with it. But we will prep a little bit for what is to come shortly. Then we go ahead and we set the forward speed to the results that we got over here. There we go file, save, we'll get an error, and because there's no entry state into the connection default. That is all fine for now, we will fix that momentarily. So let's go into the animation graph again then. So here we have, if you click on the default you get the, the state machine that we had named default earlier. If you click on an animation graph you get here first, but then you can just double click to get to state machine. So in here is where we define our states. So we will be wanting a few states for our blends but we can start off with making our first one which we can call jogging slash idle. Then we'll drag from entry into jogging idle. There, that should be fine and then we double click into jogging idle. So this is where we determine what the animations will look like when a character enters this particular state in their animation blueprint. For us this is where we put the blend space. So if we type blend space we get jogging and we'll just Connect those two results and then for an input it wants a forward speed which we have already created and then we'll compile and save and you'll see that we get our idle pose here. Next we go back to our folder structure and we find the third person game mode starter that we copied. We open up that one and we changed the default pawn class to our start pawn. Compile, save. Then we go back to our blueprint for our third person character. Actually never mind, we'll do that later. We go back to our map again. We will quickly go and change the game mode in world settings. If you don't have world settings uh, shown up over here, then you can find it on the window world settings to activate it. Game mode override, we will choose our starter one that we copied and changed earlier. Save current, it should have... It's, it has the correct pawn selected, good. From here we will just go and change the actual blueprint for animation in the character that we copied. So go into the third person character starter, click on mesh find the category that says animation under animation mode no animation class we will change to bp animation starter compile save close this pawn that we already have over here 
is of the third person character, not the one that we want, so we'll just delete that one. Save the level. We will need to do another thing for clarity here. If we go to the animation, start a pack and go to mesh, we'll find the mannequin that says SK, that stands for skeletal mesh. We need to rename this one as well for clarity's sake. I will show you in a moment. So we suffix it with starter as well. There we go. Save the skeleton. Then we go back to our folder. We open up the third person character. We also need to change the skeleton mesh. And we search for starter. When we choose that, compile, save. Now if we press play, we enter up into the world here. We seem to be having the idle state of the animation. And if you use your WASD keys, you can now see that you're running around with the character looks okay. Press escape. Okay. That is all for part one. I hope you join me in part two where we finished animation blueprint with our second blend space. Keep on learning.